Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Fresh Retwist, David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to catch a vibe with you. What's going on? Same old. Same. Back after a week off. Mm-hmm. Impromptu. Un- unexpected week off. Impromptu week off. Because, uh... You didn't have it. Didn't have it. It was like, nah. And you were taking too long to work and stuff, so... I was putting the kids to bed. After they had fallen asleep, you were still doing work. Because I figured you were setting up. You know if I'm setting up. And then this, I came out. And then I came out here. And I was playing 2K. In this house, you know if I'm setting up or not because you're here. But yeah, it didn't have. It would have had to been another late night recording. And stand up. Um, pull your mic out a little bit. Like bend it, bend it. Like there you go. I should pick up your a bit better. So what's going on? I don't know. I'm here I'm living. You don't know. So it's Wednesday, Wednesday, September twenty seventh. September twenty seventh. Which means the debate is happening. The Repu- second Republican presidential debate is happening tonight. I think it's over. It's. Uh, I think it's. Oh, it started at nine, so it's probably over at eleven. Well, the only person on stage is Nikki Haley, so. Oh. So they you know, they finished? I guess so. Or they took a that, break. Maybe they took a bathroom. I think, yeah, I think it's a commercial break because two people are back up. Okay. Well, I'm not concerned. Yeah. Um, we were supposed to watch the debate. And I thought we were on one accord because I told Jessica earlier in the day, I was like, yo, the debate's tonight. We got to watch it because we're going to record she was like, okay. And then I came out after I put the first two, our uh, two youngest daughters to bed. And Jessica's watching Jeopardy. I'm like, Jessica, the flip are you doing? Celebrity Jeopardy. The flip are you doing? We're so supposed to better. be watching the debate. Celebrity Jeopardy. The future of our country. I... The future leader of our country could be on this stage tonight. They're not. It could be Vivek Ramaswamy. It could be Chris, Crispy Christy. <laughs> It's definitely not Krispy gonna, Kreme. It's absolutely Chris, not Krispy Kreme. Christy, Nikki Haley, Tim Mouthful of Teeth Scott. That man got a mouthful of teeth, yo. His smile is it's Kool-Aid. full. He's got Kool Aid smile. I don't like. That's I don't right. like that's, him. No, stop. That's racist. Say a black man got a Kool Aid smile. It's disrespectful. What? That's racist. How? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like another that. thing to do today. Or you just you don't I like them. Say, racist. Say it's racist. I do that. And of all the black men, so it's... I I do that pretty regularly. Um, I don't like him. Like his face pops up, and I'm just like, he grieves my spirit. It's a smile. It's not. It's just his face. You're jealous. And then, jealous and then, the amount of teeth I that he has. I have. I have <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, I know what it is. You're jealous of the amount of teeth he has in his mouth. I, I'm good with my what twelve teeth showing in my smile, not all my molars. You're jealous. Um, it's okay. I'm not. That's I fine. don't. I don't. I just. I'm not a fan of him. Um, in his presence, he just he grieves my spirit. You know they were trying to make a big thing. Who's they? And about what? They about uh, the fact that there's this there's a stigma, or there's this there's this expectation in politics that if you're a president, it's kind of like the church, right? Like if you're a pastor, you would be married. You'd be a married pastor. Like mm-hmm. If you're a male pastor, you're supposed to have a wife. Because if you're a leader, you you lead a family. So, people, there was a there was an article. I actually didn't read it, but apparently there was an article trying to make a big deal about nobody's ever like nobody knows what his relationship status is. Tim Scott. So they're trying to make like. I mean, I'm sure he's this thing somebody. that hey, you can't be a president because. Or actually, he might be a good president because no one knows his moves. I don't know. He probably swirling too. Now that, now that there's anything wrong with swirling. That's racist. No, I'm, there's nothing wrong with swirling. Jungle, everybody gets jungle fever every once in a while. What? Yeah. I don't get jungle fever. 
more like what's what's another rainforest fever (laughs) (laughs) rainforest (laughs) fever yeah i mean ain't ain't nothing wrong you get jungle fever i've had jungle fever before yeah Mm. i bet you huh no that's why they hook me up these joints are heavy but you should hook me up they're heavy because your hair is long yeah and it got and i know that my i have length now because she was doing like locks back here she was tightening them and i only felt the pressure like right here but i know she was yeah. pulling back like i didn't even feel it by like next year you're probably gonna be like mid back so when we go back to saint lucia i will officially i will have grown into the Rock moniker Nova. do we have to go to saint lucia this year or make it like a bite we bye. Go next year next year okay every next other year. year those are my people i can't be away from them for too long um but yeah, so they were trying to make this thing about Tim Scott. The fact that there's never been a single president. I'm sure there has been, but it's just an expectation that. No, I don't think there has. I'm sure, there has been. Was Lincoln married? Yeah. Sure. To Mrs. Lincoln. Hmm. I'm pretty sure she was sitting next to him when he got shot. Oh. Well, that'd be interesting. Research. Has there ever been a it single? It could probably be beneficial. Because then he's not distracted by yeah, he gotta worry about a wife, the stress <laughs> of being like a husband and father. It, you know, it might, it might. He gotta worry about just random. He got no attachments. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Tim Scott, Nikki Haley, uh, Mike Pence, the God, Mike Pence. He's not. That's my man, right? He's there. a super villain. Mike Pence. He's a villain. He's he not quite drop, super He tried to drop a couple a couple jokes that the crowd didn't really go for. Or a couple one-liners, excuse me. And you, you could tell they were one-liners because he stopped. Yeah. And like waited for responses. Waited for the applause. It was like, sir, it's not, it's not he's there. Just, he, I mean, he's got like that old man, that old head like swag about him. But I don't know that. I don't know. It's weird. Like I could tell, like if I if you ever had like a personal conversation with him, like he'd probably be like a really cool cool guy to have a conversation with, depending upon what you're talking about. But it doesn't really translate on TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's I can tell he's just not quite. But are you spoiled? Not like, quite there. You kind of came of age in the Obama. No, no. I feel like politically, Obama kind of set a different bar. He brought charisma. I mean, you think about Bill Clinton and Obama. So, like, these are the two significant Democratic presidents that have been in our lifetime that we witnessed. And even as a kid who didn't vote, I knew Bill Clinton was cool. Like, I knew people would reference, you know, he was first black president, even though he wasn't black. He was just a white guy who had a little bit of swagger and played the saxophone. So I wonder if that has kind of tainted our perspective in terms of, like, this is how the, you're you're supposed to, at least from the democratic side how you should personify the role of being a president no, i don't and it's not so much as president seeing him as presidential it's just you can tell people who have it and people who don't mm-hmm. who have like the that it and mike pence doesn't have like vivek he's got he's got it he's got charisma He's got delivery. He's he's got a fantastic vocabulary. He's articulate. He's orator. He's he quick. looks like Jimmy Neutron. He's quick. He's quick on his feet. Uh, his, Y'all look his, at his hairline. He looks his, like his Jimmy hairline Neutron. is has retreated. Um, but it's not even that. His hair goes up. Yeah, who's got a he's got a forehead on him? It's not. It's not even the forehead. Uh, it's his hair goes up, and it accentuates even, the forehead. Even, even, even Chris Christie, but you know, Chris Christie's. You know, he's been in the game. I mean, as Mike, as Mike Pence, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, Pence tried a couple one-liners and didn't really land. It's kind of like the whole Jeb Bush thing. Remember when he was down in Florida and he was trying to run for president in the primaries? He uh, asked the crowd that he was speaking to. He was like, please clap. <laughs> and then they, I vaguely remember yeah, that. Yeah, Jeb. What is Jeb doing? Probably living his best life. Yes, he should be. Can't, what, can a can a bump cook? I can never say that name. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see because your boy got a. Uh, Not my boy, because I don't know. Who you're what what about. what happened with the fraud and the Trump business thing? Uh, your boy, because you're you're close to this. What is he? Triple impeached, quadruple. Twice twice impeached, 
Was quadruple like indicted. Whatever. That guy, the criminal who used to hold office. I guess he has been... Um, Inflating his... His, his assets. His assets. Like they said, Which I, I think everyone, to a degree, does. I mean, I inflate my Famous resume. Because like, you know how they're always saying, you know, this person's net worth is blah, blah, blah. People, they only know because people report mm-hmm. what they're what they're worth their assets are yeah but his is is bad his is really bad it's um i think they said one of his penthouses is maybe ten thousand square feet and he's reported it as being thirty thousand square feet and worth like 300 and something million dollars um so the banks might come for him because he's been lying Um, and then i think his son has also been lying because or inflating or whatever falsifying uh so he might lose trump tower like he might lose all his assets i think he i was half listening half working but i feel like i heard that he cannot do business in new york or in georgia that there's a state like he's actually like prohibited from doing business in for the time being yeah. so um we'll see how this plays out I, I, the fact that all of this is happening and he's still a viable candidate for president is what viable. I, he's the leading candidate is what I will never get over. Republican side. like I do not I, I I do not understand and my whole perspective on criminology and what makes a criminal and how people support and stand with criminals has has altered because like he's just changed the game he has changed the game yeah um and he won't debate nobody. Yeah, I need to. He's winning by like a million points. Who are you going to debate, Ron DeSantis? I feel like although the, DeSantis was much, he, he was, he's hired somebody. He was, he was much. He's much better than than last debate. He's wasted his money, but he's hired somebody. Look, man. he's he's being coached. You might um, try to get VP after he just keeps came for Trump. Are they pledging allegiance? They're Republicans, so you know they. They're really heavy on the patriotism stuff. Very cult, cult like. Um, your daughter's in there about to cough along, cough along up. By the way, mm-hmm. um, yeah, interesting. Um, interesting. It'd be nice to see the uh, a lot of the reactions to the to the base because I didn't we didn't really get. To, I mean, we walked, caught like bits and pieces, but I was setting up for us to to record and so i get to see all of it kind of like last time i was actually sitting right in front of it and paid no attention because i i did not um you know i got the new i got the new iphone congrats iphone got the blue the titanium iphone it's much lighter um than uh, who's this somebody viewed my linkedin profile you know how absolutely useless that is i think it's useless because curiosity is what stirs a lot of decisions people make i feel like um because what do you somebody looks at your profile what do you do you look at their profile i do not look at their profile yes i don't i'm real strategic about like linkedin has this new function where it's like it'll give you a notification and it's like oh you might know this person so if you click on it outside of the app like it's just a notification on your phone it takes you to their profile that pisses me off because now it looks like i was looking at this person's profile and i didn't but you care were. i wasn't but you did i did but i didn't want to i was coerced into it but you at least no, were interested I, in knowing who they were because I you clicked not. on the notification I was just like oh why are you giving me this notification sometimes it's just a matter of oh i'm gonna go into linkedin there's already a notification let me mm. click it and then it's forced me into so now this person's gonna look and see me that i looked at their profile and think that i'm i care and i don't do you have you heard of Vestique? Mm, it sounds like something out of Bangladesh. Oh, she went to the, this woman who looked at my. Uh, That's the company she works for. Yeah. Where are they based out of Bangladesh? She just graduated. She hadn't even graduated yet. <laughs> She's like. 20. But that's that's what annoys me. Like when someone look, if you look at my LinkedIn profile and I see that you've looked like I'm expecting a job offer. You know, it's kind of like. Uh, back in the day when there was this thing that like when when you 
responded to somebody's tweet or something like that, that you were automatically going to be like, <laughs> like automatically expected to follow or whatever. Um, yeah, it's like, why are you looking at my profile? Like, like my you, you have a job in my area. Somebody's yeah. referred you to me. Like yeah. I'm, I'm expecting an offer letter with some type of communication at some point. Yeah, I am. Um, I can get down with that. I can, I can understand that expectation mm-hmm. it's, to me it's just it's not it's not right because like why are you randomly looking at my profile there are some people who look at my profile that i'm like i know you're just looking to see where i am right um like i've known you i've i've worked with you in some capacity professionally in the past so you're just peeping like i have this one like linkedin stalker um we used to work together on a tobacco campaign years ago she managed one market i managed another okay, so she okay yeah, but like every three to six months, she peeps my profile. Let's see what you're doing. But I know what she's doing. Like, she's really just seeing where I am if I'm doing anything new, which is interesting. So, I'm gonna, real quick, I want to point out uh, your daughter is coughing. Mm-hmm. She coughs at night. Yeah. And we've gotten the air ducts cleaned, and she's still coughing, which means we wasted. We did it. Money. She was complaining that her ear hurt, so she likely has an ear infection. But I bought one of those ear thingies. They were on sale. So um, I'm going to check her ear and see what it looks like so that I don't have to pay $80. What, number five? Ear infection? Yeah. In her life? Yeah. It's like her fifth ear infection. Isn't She's it? had way more than five ear infections. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm waiting for a lot. Like, I feel like if she has two more, the doctor's going to be like, she needs the tubes dudes. put in, which I don't feel like dealing with her under anesthesia again. So... At this point, she's probably she's probably used to it. Just ride it out. <laughs> I know. I feel like there was a window that she had one, and we just missed it. Um, but she can still hear, so I guess she's okay. So yeah, uh, the iPhone much lighter. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they went titanium instead of like glass and all that stuff. First pro iPhone I've owned since the iPhone ten. You really wanted to talk about your iPhone? No, I was just I just wanted to bring it up that I've got the new iPhone, and I've got let me see you my my uh screensaver is my lovely wife i don't even like that picture hmm? i don't even like that picture i know you don't like the pictures of you that i love which is interesting and the ones you like of yourself i'm like I'm like that one really <laughs> like all these fire pics i'd be taking and you like this old basic photo some stranger took of you wow but anyways yeah i haven't had this size since since the iphone 10 and that was the first form factor that didn't have a home button um but this is nice i like not have i like being able to use my phone with one i've hand. been telling you this i know and you have fought me on it i know also the USB-C now in the iphone which means i can now charge my iphone and like every other smart device i own with the same cable apple has now which means now i only have to share a cable with Two other people. Three. Two. Three. Just Sonoma and Savi. Sonoma and Savi and Salas. No, she has USB C. Oh, that's right. She's got, she's, she's got the iPad. So yeah. Your chargers are finna go missing. No, they're not. No, they're not. Her chargers are finna go missing. <laughs> Her chargers are finna go missing. That's why I'm like, I'm not gonna upgrade because I can manage Savi and Sonoma. They don't take their chargers anywhere. They just let their devices die and throw them at you. Masala's charger will wind up missing real quick. Like, I have a charger sitting on the counter, and I need to seize it before she finds it. She should be like, do you have a charger? I'm like, no, I let you borrow one. <laughs> she like, oh. I'm like, what do you mean? Oh, where's my charger at? A kid is the worst person to share a charger with. And this house isn't but so big. I'm like, Sasa, where did you put the charger? All the chargers are missing. All the char. I had a charger. I got a new computer with work. I sent back my old computer, but I didn't send back the charger intentionally. That charger's missing. It didn't even make it two days. The charger's vanished. It's just gone. My, how are you? And then she'll come and find another charger. All the chargers just be gone. Like, just just gone. Um, and she has one device. Like, literally one. She's got two. She's got the Switch and the... Oh, the Switch. No, she's got three. The Switch, the... Where's Chrome. the charger for the Chromebook? We've been using it. That's the one that we've been using. No, that's the charger from my old work computer that I forgot to send back. 
for my other when I worked with the gin company. I don't know, because I feel like I, I gave it to her and I was like, hey, Solace, here's your charger for your. That your, one's gone missing. It's gone missing. Yeah, so she's got her Chromebook, her Switch, and her. It's probably one of her backpacks. Her iPad. Um, so yeah, use USB C, which is nice. Although it threw me for a loop when I got in the car. Because uh, I went to plug in the Lightning because cause the car still has a USB A. I was like, ah. But luckily I had a USB A to USB C sticker, so we worked it all out. But it's nice. It's nice having it. Um, I think I'll stay here at this, this size until they come up with the, the iPhone Fold eventually. So, um, yeah, man. It's nice. It's nice to be back. You know, whenever we miss a week, it feels like it's been it's been so long, um, and so much has happened. Mm-hmm. Like there was stuff that happened last week that I want to talk about, but it was like just didn't have it. So, um, you seen the? Have you looked further into the Van Lathan, Rachel Lindsay, Larry Elder interview? No, I still don't know who you that just saw, is. You just saw the clip. The clip you sent me. Mm-hmm. So Larry Elder's running for president, and he was hoping to be on, to make, uh, make the cut. So nobody else knows that he's running for president. People know he's running for president because he's in, he's in, one he's Larry Elder's been he's like been on radio and things like that. I feel like if they um, knew he would have made the cut. But um, no, he made the cut. Because I was like, I don't know. This but you yet. know, it's interesting because he says one of his things is his the, the whole. Uh, focus of his campaign is restoring America by highlighting the epidemic of fatherlessness in America. Is he a father who is less to his children? No, but he's saying a lot of the issues in America, especially related to the black community, can be traced to the fact, can be traced to the lack of a father in the home. And thus, if we focus on that, stay out of trouble, don't get married before you're 20, get a good job, go to school, finish school, you won't be poor, and then you'll just magically be prosperous. Okay. That's how he says. But also doesn't believe that systemic racism exists anymore. <laughs> What's funny is um, he thinks that he's being, <laughs> I don't know, treated unfairly by the the Republican, the Republican Party because they won't admit him to these debates. But it's not because he's black. It's not because he's black. Well, you know, they got Tim Scott up there. Tim Scott is... <laughs> is what? He's just the he's token. Black. He's black. And, you know, according to him, America's not a racist country. So, um... He literally said he's been discriminated against. Yes. In this very debate. But the country is not racist. The person who discriminated against him was racist, but the country isn't. Okay. So, but anyways, Larry Elder was on, on, uh, I don't know why he did that to him. On higher learning. And, uh, I, I, well, I guess we'll run the clip because, you know, I look up the van and I know you and I both like Rachel. And we saw, like, we saw Rachel go to that, that level, that next level. That level you don't want to see no black woman get to where she's like, yeah, when she's, where she's like, where <laughs> she's like speaking with her hands um I need to go check on her. but because so much of his camp is his, his campaign slogan involves fatherlessness rachel asked him like well what are you doing mm-hmm. to combat it the lack of because it's one thing to address it but and one thing to not to say it and then another thing to actually try to um to fix the issue and he was like well do you accept that there's an issue with fatherlessness in the black community and she was like well no i don't say that you said that but what have you done? And he and he would not answer the question because Rachel did not acknowledge the fact that it's an issue in the black community. Therefore, he would not answer the question because and he said, why would I provide solutions to a problem that you don't think exists? You're talking about that there's this epidemic in the black community of fatherlessness. What have you done to combat fatherlessness in the black community? Okay, so you're accepting that we have an issue with fatherlessness in the black community. You're accepting that, I assume. I, I'm well, not. Well, you said okay. that. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think so. So, so you're you're not accepting it, and you're asking me, what am I doing about something that you well, don't no, accept? No, no, you're you're. 
my, Larry, my, the my, damn my question is clear as day. Is that do you have you not done anything to combat fatherlessness? You are you are, you, you, you just now acknowledged in your opinion that what I just now said wow. isn't even a problem. Larry, please answer what have you done to combat fatherlessness? I'm waiting for Rachel to answer my question, then I'll respond. I've already answered that question. So so you want me to respond to a problem to no, answer no, Larry, what It's your problem. campaign, Larry. No, Larry, this is your campaign. Your campaign is about fatherlessness. I'm giving you the floor to talk about how you have combat fatherlessness because you say it is such an issue in this country and you don't want to answer the question. I'm happy to answer the question, provided that you acknowledge that there is a problem. Uh, Larry, get the fuck out of here. But he but, thinks but it's it his, exists. But it's his... <laughs> It's literally the focus of it. So campaign. because one person does. So they kept going. They kept going back and forth. Like I watched the whole interview and this part was so hilarious to me. The clip that's on social media that's gone viral was obviously edited down. But they just kept going back and forth. They kept trying to get him to like Larry answer the question. Because it is a simple question. It's it's a, this is the what foundation have, of your. What have you done? That's why they're not letting him on this debate what are you stage. You do turkey drives. You going to the boys and girls club? Like, what are you doing? You a big brother? He would, like, he would not answer the question. So Van finally said, "Larry, get the fuck out of here." <laughs> that was amazing. That that was great. Rachel got upset. Rachel got out of character. The man said, "Larry, get the fuck out of here." Because it was a waste. It's a waste of energy. You just you just, you're just bull driving at this point. So like, like, just get out of here. Like, most of the interview was had gone pretty pretty well. Obviously, they disagreed on a lot. But he was just he was just clowning at that point. So they like, let's get the fuck out of here. So then where do they go from there? <laughs> Nowhere really. I mean it, it, they ended it. it. It it didn't go on much longer after that, maybe like five minutes. Um but yeah. It was it was funny. It was good content. I didn't expect to watch the whole interview. I don't really watch full higher learning episodes. I listen to them fully but I, I very rarely watch them fully but it was um it was pretty good i don't foresee myself being in the car enough to to hear it yeah or being in the car by myself enough to hear it it was good another reminder of why i love higher learning so much and van is my one of my idols one of my, one of my role models excuse me not idols um, some other big news today. Uh, Damian Lillard got traded to the Milwaukee Bucks. You know who Dame, Damian Lillard is? Dame Dollar? Portland Trailblazers? Don't run from the grind? Is he one of the cute ones? You gonna ask me? <laughs> I'm gonna say, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, he the cute one with the fade. Like, is, oh, is that what he looks like? Oh, no, I don't know. I mean, I think he rocks a fade. Mm. Portland Trailblazers, Damian Lillard. He's been there for like 11 years. He looks like it too. Yeah, he's like thirty. He's in his early thirties. But yeah, he's so he's he's not. <clears throat> he's all Ameri uh all American, all NBA player. I believe he was voted top seventy five player all time, um, all star. Uh, but has never you know really been on a perennial contender because the organization hasn't put pieces around him. No, he's had some pieces, but you know, unfortunately there were like injuries and things like that. Um but his thing was no, nah, I'm gonna stay loyal to Portland because they stayed loyal to me. I'm not gonna just go jump they, ship. They ditched him. No, nah, I mean he's been he's been with him. But at, at this I guess he got tired of losing. Uh this year they had the third pick. I think he wanted them to trade it to get like, you know, an established player who could help them. They drafted a rookie. And then they uh they gave a role player a five-year, $160 million contract, which obviously eats up cap space mm -hmm. to go get. So then he was just like, yo, I want out. And he thought that since he had been there so long, he's been there, one, you know, their franchise player, that they would send him to his destination. He wanted to go to Miami, play with Jimmy Butler and, and you know, and those guys. And it's been dragging on all summer long. But this afternoon, they traded him to Milwaukee. Go play with Giannis. You know, Isn't Giannis MVP like two years in a row? Well, not he. He was two year MVP. Giannis is like top, probably like top thirty all time, and he's still under thirty. You put Dame with him, Milwaukee's gonna be nice next year. 
They're already nice. They're going to be nicer. I might have to put some money on that. Oh. Sports betting league? Oh, we, are we about to get up on these parlays. <laughs> We're going to get up on these parlays. Okay. It's parlay away. We're going to be betting the farm, too. We'll be like, Mom, Dad, have the room ready. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> Just in case we go under. We're going to be ready. We'll get the parlay. We also, I want to go to some games. In Milwaukee? Charlotte. Oh, I was like, anyway. These teams come, teams come to play the Hornets. Right? Nobody is Just going. Hornets. What is the state of the Hornets? Because Jordan ditched them. They're all right. They got LaMelo. Did J. Cole, um, did he, wasn't he investing in them? J. Cole and somebody else. Which I think I heard a rumor that he might be a minority owner, but I'm not. Uh, I can't. Sub- Speaking of J. Cole, did you see how um, he met Topanga? And she was like, I saw you're my favorite. I saw something on social media with them. Yeah, apparently, like together. Apparently, she she's a big fan. Do I need to go give her something? Yes, J Cole is part of the um the conglomerate. There's another notable name in that conglomerate. Uh, Eric Church, Mm-mm. country music star. Um, Gay Plotkin and mm-hmm. Rick Chanel. That's these are the only names that are coming up. There's somebody else. Not according to this article. Okay, well, it is what it is. Yeah, but yeah, J Cole. Shout out to J Cole. Yeah, minority owner, minority and a minority owner. Hopefully, he can do. Something. Interesting, you know, uh, Topanga and uh, so it was what like Topanga, uh, Shorty from. Uh, Say by the bell. Say by the bell. Uh, before that, Winnie Cooper. Winnie Cooper was a heartthrob for a lot of American boys. Really? She seemed annoying. She was, because she did Kevin dirty. You remember that? When she uh, had transferred to the other school? I never watched. And her and Kevin. All right, so look, peep this. <laughs> I'm going to take y'all. Hey, for y'all who know the Wonder Years, I'm about to take y'all back down memory lane. Oh, the Wonder I thought you were talking about. Oh, I was thinking Whitley. I messed her up with Whitley. No, 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 not Whitley. Although, Whitley, too. She was uh, annoying. She had the voice. Twang! Um, Winnie Cooper was the, 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 the girl next door. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm talking about. How she went to the other school and told Kevin, and her and Kevin were supposed to still be dating. And so, the two schools did the field trip at the museum. You remember this? You don't remember. I don't, but you've told me this story. So, I don't know why it sits with you so. Because if it was so wrong, why shouldn't you just tell him? So they're like, you know, Kevin's like, oh, you know, he's my girl, I'm with you. But, you know, Kevin, when his energy was a little different, like the whole night or the whole afternoon, Kevin couldn't quite put his finger on what it was. I knew what it was. I hoped I was wrong, but I knew what it was the entire time. She was stepping out on him. She's being a little. <laughs> but anyways. So Kevin's like trying to talk to her and, you know, she's being real distant and she's being blah, 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 blah. And then he finally, you know, um, something happens. They kind of get separated and then, you know, he's, they meet back at the bus and then she's like, Kevin, I met someone. Because <laughs> like in middle school too, <laughs> which, is, just so, which Young. is so wild to me. They were kids. Kevin, I met someone. And Kevin's like, what? Like, like, of course you messed when you're at a new school. Like, it's Kevin. Like, it's Winnie and Kevin. Like, what? And then they start playing the Beatles. God only knows when I be with. So, and then they showed the dude coming up behind Winnie, putting his hand on, like, the nip of her back. Like, the little, the, you know, small of her back. You know, that real dangerous area. Because the back is, like, real critical. Like, when it comes to men and women. Men and women. I'm aware. You go too high, it's just like, you know, hey. Hey there. You go too low, it's like, yo, but you got to get like that sweet spot. It's different. It's like, I care about you. Like, seriously, like I'm, I'm about you. And that's exactly where dude put his hand, small on her back. And then it shows the buses, you know, the two buses, they're driving alongside and then one goes one way and then one goes the other. The symbolism, Winnie and Kevin splitting, it was tough. I was in my room having a fit watching this this episode. Like I was, I was in shambles. Cause Wendy did Kevin so wrong. Did she, or did her life shift 
Why didn't she tell him? She didn't know how to tell him. Oh. They were in middle school. And that's an excuse, right? They're in middle that's school. That's an excuse. She ain't had no problem jumping in the dude's arms. She was in middle school. He's so full of excuses when it comes to women and a horrible decision making. Poor Kevin. Kevin was All okay. he wanted to do was just be in love. I think Kevin was okay. Yeah, he ended up being all right. That's not the point. Don't they end up together at the end? They actually don't. Oh, they don't? Leave him oh, I'm thinking of Boy Meets World with his brother. Wrong Savage. Wrong Savage. Who was actually running for uh, Congress? So which, California Congress. Which Savage? Corey or Kevin? Corey. I like Corey. Wait, is he a Republican or a Democrat? Or independent? I don't, I don't, I don't really care, but um, I know he's, he's running. I think he's run before in the past and then lost, but I think he's running again. Um, but interesting, he does, you know, the, the not Saved by the Bell, the um, Boy Meets World cast, they've done like some things. Mm-hmm. Some, like, he hasn't been thing. in the pictures. I saw a picture today. He wasn't there. Yeah, he been there. Interesting. Maybe it's messing with his image. That's how, I, that's how anybody knows who he is. That's true. <laughs> like, it's a very valid point. It's not like it could damage it. Like, that's how we know you. He's probably doing more damage, not, you mm-hmm. know. You know, I know. Did you know there was a 90s con? I think I heard about that, yeah. I didn't know that was a thing, but apparently, like, all of the big 90s shows, like, there was a whole convention. And they should have went. I know. It was West Coast. I th- probably. I think it was very, it gave very California vibes. See, California's a place. But I think be- it was, like, Family Matters. Like, they did, like, TGIF. California's a place to be. It's not. It, it is. It absolutely yeah, is. It is if you're not trying to go anywhere else. Because traffic gonna keep you stuck. You know what's interesting? People always say that, yet yeah, people in California still get from point A to point B. Yeah, because they leave today to get there by tomorrow. They're not really we'll talk, happy. We'll talk about they're, they're, they're not about. very happy. Don't, they're not, don't it, be disrespecting the city angels, all right? Don't, don't do that. Even the angels are late. Angels are not late. Angels are late. West Coast. Pox at the best. West Coast is the best coast. You are paranoid. I'm paranoid. I'm just one of these kids is gonna come and snuff me. <laughs> All the trash I'll be talking during the day. Hey, I'm You're like, so paranoid. No, one's actually coming. No, nobody is. You sure? Yes, I am literally looking at you the sure monitor. The, you sure the monitor's not frozen? Yes. No. I'm scared one's gonna be like, "Hey, Dad!" <laughs> Punch me in my face. Because you know, I like to I like to pick on the girls. Um, gonna, I have no idea how we. Get you. I have no idea how we got on the Wonder Years. We were talking about. Oh, take it back, take it back. Jay Cole, Corey, and Topanga. No, no, Jay Cole and Topanga. Oh yeah, and Winnie Cooper. Yeah, Winnie Cooper. Um, so I can't believe Winnie. Yeah, that's 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 interesting. Um, but yeah, I want I want to go see some some Hornets games. Once people come, you know, like maybe try to get some Warriors tickets. Those will be hard to get and it'll be expensive, but Steph's not, not going to play at home unless he's hurt. You know, he's 30, he's 36 now, so he mm-hmm. might actually be hurt. But, um, yeah, so that big trade happened today. Media day starts next week for the NBA teams before training camp. And then in like 20 some days, the season starts. I'm excited. Aren't you excited? I don't know. What do you mean? I have such a love hate relationship with basketball season. Why? I'm talking to the mic. Because that's all you care about. That's not all I care it about. It is. You're just always gonna be you're gonna be on your little folder phone watching it. One you number know. number one. It's a Google Pixel fold. Not a folder phone. It's not okay. a it's not a it's not a fo- it's not a phone made out of a folder. So your pixel folder, you're it's, gonna be watching on that, you're gonna be out on the porch watching it anytime the TV's free, you're gonna be watching it. it. It's just all basketball all the time. And then I really only care about the playoffs and the finals. Yeah, you're a fake fan. I'm not a fake fan. I'm I just fake. I just care about the end. <laughs> Care about the finish? Care about the finish. <laughs> Who's going to finish? How quickly are we going <laughs> to... Uh, is it going to be a strong finish? Or is it going to be the finish we anticipated? Um, that's all I care about. Like, 
that's when I get hype for for basketball. Like all the preliminary stuff, uh, summer league, all that other stuff that you're just like, eh, I don't I don't care about. You that. know, I'm a purist. I I love, and maybe because I think part of it is because I I work in marketing. The my current client like they usually do big NBA activations and it's like one of our campaigns is play. Like we have a tip off campaign um, and then we have a playoff campaign and playoffs is really big. And last year, or I mean over the summer, uh, spring and summer, it was playoffs was big because, you know, Charlotte was in it. So I got to reference like my own Charlotte home city, English. not the playoffs, but the um, what's right before the playoffs. We were one of the expansion markets, so like not every market that had a basketball team we activated in, but Charlotte was one of the mm. the four markets. So I was like excited about that, um, and then Charlotte lost, so it was like, well, that was a waste. But um, we had the playoffs, so it was like business was busy, and I was always referencing basketball games, and then we were doing activations based off of that. So, um, but I feel like that's when it gets lit. That's when I care about it. Mm. But like the like preliminary stuff in between from tip off to actual playoffs, it's just kind of like, can we just fast forward to May mm. or end of April? Mm. But I appreciate a basketball game. Like I do enjoy a basketball game. I enjoy being at basketball games. Um, I do love the sport, but I don't love. I do. I play basketball. I don't. So I do have an appreciation and an affinity for basketball. Mm. Um, but. I think you just burn me out. So it's just like she love it. All this basketball. I mean, I'm not lusting over it like you are. Watching on your folder with your pixels. <laughs> but you love you love basketball. I love I love the finish. <laughs> it's, it's, you love the finish or you love basketball? I love the beginning. Mm. The tip off. <laughs> What is wrong with you? <laughs> just stop. You took it here, oh and I love the finish, the tip oh off gosh. and the finish. You love, you love the tip. Off. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not doing this with you. Yeah. So. But I enjoy basketball way more than I enjoy football. I'll watch that, a football game, but I do. That we, that we agree on. Yeah, I do enjoy, and I can follow a basketball game a lot better. Than I can football. Yeah, man, this hair keeps falling down. I'm gonna have to get. I don't like tying it up when it's still wet because. Mm. Like, and it's fresh. You don't want to pull against your roots too much. Yeah, because I thought she was about to pull one of my locks out, and she was retwisting that joint. Was like, <laughs> you can say something, you know. I don't want to be no <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Although, although the inner bitch in me was like, like say something, please say something. It'd be like that sometimes. Yeah. No, be no, no punk bitch. Um. So, tip off. Where you want to go? This we're at forty two minutes. I don't know. I don't. I, we are. I don't know what flow we caught. Like, because one of the things we were going to talk about last week. It's Tyler Perry, because people were on his neck. I know, but I don't know why. So, I'm a well, I do partially. I know allegedly he gave advice, and somebody I did read something where someone said, like, "Of course, Tyler Perry would do this. This is literally the plus the, every the, every, every one of his movies." But I didn't hear what he said because um, I think when I saw it, the girls were around, and I'm one not confident I'll be able to hear, and two, I don't know what's going to be said, and if it's content i want them absorbing so he basically i am just play it. listen a, a lot of women especially black women and mm -hmm. i might get in trouble for saying this but i will in the in in our society right now mm -hmm. black women are making a lot more money for the most part than yeah. black men right there are a lot of black men who are successful but for the most part black women are making the money so you if you can find love if that man works, you know, at whatever job mm -hmm. and is a good man and is good to you mm -hmm. and honors and honors the house and honors his wife and does what he can, mm -hmm. because 
his his gift may not be your gift. Exactly. That is okay. Mm -hmm. That's not somebody who's beneath you. Yeah. That's somebody who came to love you at your worth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And as long as he's secure in himself to mm -hmm. know that, yep, she makes most of the money. All I can pay is the light bill. As long as she's comfortable enough to say, I'm going to cover the mortgage and all the other stuff. You pay the light bill, baby. You can take me to dinner every now and then. Mm -hmm. That is fine. Yeah. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but that's so hard for a lot of people to take in because that means, no, no, no. I need somebody to, who is, <laughs> I need, I, they need to make five times more and I got to have, the, I got to have, well, you uh -huh. keep, but go on, keep, keep, looking, go on, keep your list, baby. Yeah. God, God bless you. Hope it happens. Go on, keep your list. <laughs> but when you talk about just someone to love you and support yes. you, I, I know people who have, who, whose men can't touch what they make. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But when you see them together, that love, that support, that, so, that I got uh, you. I so don't know who was interviewing him. I think it was. It's that couch for me. It's a nice couch. I'm not big on, like, decor. That's a couch. I could spend some. I could spend a whole day on that couch. I'd Save for, like, bathroom breaks and getting up to get some food. you find me on that couch that if couch. we had that couch. That couch looks. Up. So now the goal is to get a house big enough. To fit that couch. Because that, that couch, couch is a room. Couch is. And then two, might be two rooms. <clears throat> okay, get to your point. What's what are you about to ask me? No, I was just I, I don't know. Obviously, there's probably more context. Mm -hmm. Always. But you could you could take that clip and look at it independently, mm -hmm. independent of of anything else. <clears throat> um, but this was last week, and of course, uh, I think as you would expect, um, a lot of women. Specifically, black women mm -hmm. were not happy with Tyler mm -hmm. and felt some kind of way about what he was saying. Mm -hmm. But we're pretty fortunate because you happen to be black. So we can ask you, after taking this in and processing <laughs> it, how you feel about it. I'm not here to be the spokesperson of all. Oh, so all you want women. me to speak for like all men when we when we have those conversations with you? Because y'all y'all are more generic. <laughs> y'all are y'all are great value. The rest of us, we have like women. We have like name brand yeah, depth. Um, it's it's gonna be a no for me. Interesting. I'm not. I hate these conversations. Because it's kind of like the, it goes back to like every old, like, are you making a plate for your man when you go to his family cookout? Blah, blah, blah. You're not. Um, like, these are conversations that I think are so specific to individual, to where people are individually. Like, I don't know that it's across the board. I think um, she is in her bed. I think the number one issue that black women probably have, and again, I'm not involved with other communities, so I don't know what their conversations are, but it always seems like black women are told to settle. Um, so, oh yeah, you make more money, that should be fine but there's more there's more to it he d and he touched on it a little bit you yeah it's fine for a woman to make more money than her man but do we have enough men who are raised and confident enough in themselves to not be the breadwinner and do we have enough couples who understand that okay if he's not the breadwinner he can still be like are you doing the nuclear family, the traditional family where it's like he's the head of the household? How are you how are you able to handle she makes more money but he's the head of the household? Because then you have those moments where she could easily be like, This is my money. How are you making decisions based off of my money? So it's a lot of balance in terms of, you know, role types and role behaviors and respect. And so I think a lot of it boils down to respect and like, does he understand respect? Does he, is he in a position to be respected? Because respect shouldn't be based on how much money you make. 
um, respect is something you naturally exude um, mm. as a man in my and this is solely my opinion based off of you know just my belief and exposure to just couples and family dynamic and my preference um, we and we can speak to it some men can handle not making as much money as their woman uh, you're grinning we can speak to it we can we 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 can speak to it very well. There, very well. Yeah, there have been many. Many. A majority of majority. our relationship, I have made more money. I mean, a couple of dollars. I still make more money. A couple of dollars. I think I make more money. A couple of dollars. I'm pretty sure I make more money than you now. Yeah, there ain't no bonus this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's without... A lot of people making more than me. Sans year. bonuses, I th- I'm pretty confident I make more money than you. But... With bonuses, mm. you you do surpass me, um, and then your benefits and all of those are are better than mine. Um, better. But if you subtract those things and it's just like <laughs> dollar for dollar, salary for salary, like I I make more money. Um, but in the past, I've made more money because I've worked, I've run multiple campaigns, multiple programs. So I'm usually bringing in two salaries. This is probably the first time in a long Honestly, time. It doesn't even really matter. You could just left that. You've made more than me. Okay. Um, but this is the first time in a long time that I, I'm not bringing in two, two full-time salaries. So our playing field is pretty you even. You just stop putting like our business out there before you mess around and get robbed. I so mean, come and get it. I just said I'm not working two full time salaries, so there's really not there's not much left to be mm-hmm. robbed. Um but uh we've had that's a, that's why I say these conversations are so complicated because not everyone is like you. Um not every man is I think I'll use the word confident, is confident or okay with the fact that because it's internal. I've known men who their women make more than them, and you can see it. You can see about them. Um, they're not confident in themselves. But it's twofold. Like, how is she also making him feel? Is she also, you know... She likes an Lathan on the family that prays. Yes. Is she like that? Is she, does she belittle him? Does she hold it over her? Like, I would, like, joke with you. She be like... Catch, catch that backhand over Be like, I'd be the making account. the money. Um... And I mean, you would go with it, but we have an interesting dynamic. That's why it's like, I can't speak to everyone else. If you look from the perspective of, oh, it seems like we're always telling black women to. Stop. Because there was a time when we were dating. We were dating. It doesn't matter. His relationship. I don't think he said marriage. I think it was just relationship. I'm viewing it from marriage. Yeah, because we're married now, but there was a point in time when we were dating. Mm -hmm. And um, employment-wise, career-wise, I wasn't together. I was making significantly less than you at the time. I was actually unemployed, mm-hmm. and you said that that was one of the one of the few times we broke up. Um, you said that that was an issue for you, not so much that. Um, actually, no. I think it was. You said you felt like you were. You used a metaphor because I walk slowly. I still mm-hmm. do, and you, for some reason, were always in a hurry to get wherever we were going. Um, I just walk. With Fast. haste, yeah, for whatever. Reason. I walk like I'm trying to you get somewhere. Like, get you like you paranoid. I'm not giving someone which the opportunity was, to come which, and get me. It was questionable. Why you felt that way? Why you had to move? Felt like you need to move like that? Like what you been doing? Hmm. Okay. Anyways, um, <laughs> so use a metaphor that like I feel like you're always behind me, like literally and figuratively. Mm-hmm. Like literally whenever we go somewhere, I'm always out in front. I'm always leading you behind. But figuratively, you're behind me too. Like I've got this budding career in marketing. I've been manager for these tours and I'm getting all these positions. All these things are happening for me and you're just kind of like here. Like that was a thing. Like that was real. Now granted, that's not really a fair thing to bring up because you were much younger than you are now. Mm-hmm. Um, you're di- you're totally, the capacity to totally different woman than you no are. No kids. Yeah, no kids. You would be two totally different people. But you could at least speak to the mindset that he was addressing mm-hmm. or the mentality that he was addressing in this clip. So um, I guess maybe try to speak to it from that 
perspective well, if you can if you can remember yeah i think the hard thing about that perspective is also how you viewed yourself as well because sub- subconsciously how you viewed yourself because whenever you reference that like you're very quick to be like i was a bum i don't know that i ever saw you as a bum maybe subconsciously and bum adjacent you were bum adjacent <laughs> you 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 were um so I think that that contributes to things too, how you also see yourself. So I think that it doesn't always work if the man also isn't in position to respect himself. Mm-hmm. You can be a man making forty thousand dollars because think about it. Like there are plenty of men who, if you're unf- and I hate to have to reference these careers, but if you're a teacher, if you work in academia, like you don't have a master's degree, there you're in most places you're you're capped at a salary that's not going to you know you're not going to be a big baller for the most part. Um, I'm sorry, they got Tim Scott on the teeth. That boy got a mouth full of teeth. Good. Um, you're you're not you're not balling if you're. Hey, that boy got some teeth. David. This is. <laughs> Did I just turn the TV off? I'm sorry. I just. You want to watch? You want to cut the episode and, and go watch? It's, it's just a lot of teeth. And then he's got that, that smile that where the lips curl up and reveals the gums, too. So you get the gums and the teeth. And he's just like, I mean, he's got, and he takes, he brushes them. You can tell, and flosses. I would hope so. Probably regularly visits the dentist. You don't have a wife or kids. The least good. he could do is take care of his teeth. Good shape. Dental hygiene is very important. It says good a lot shape. about your internal health. Um, but. Oh, you love picture day. I'm sorry. I'm going to go Your mental view of yourself is probably the most foundational part. I'm, I'm saying you generically. So, yes, a woman can make more money because it's no secret, especially in the black community. Black women are doing amazing things. They are getting educated. They are getting the jobs. They are going up the corporate ladder. Uh, they are making their community proud. So... But that's not to say that there aren't a lot of black men who are doing the exact same thing. Yes, you will probably have instances where when compatibility meets, you meet him, he meets you, and y'all happen to be in different brackets. But if he is secure in himself, in, in, and I say that in terms of he knows what he's doing with his life. He's actually working because you do have, and, and this is not isolated to black men alone, but you have men who are just bums. They're lazy. They're not, they're not doing anything. They don't care. They're fine with the idea of living off of somebody and not contributing. And that's just based off of how they're raised. A lot of this is just how they're raised. The examples they've seen, you know, grandma took care of me. I didn't have to do nothing. Mm. I was, you know, the baby, everybody spoiled me because I was a guy. Whereas, you know, when Women, they force you out and you know grow and take care of yourself and whatnot so you there are just so many elements that add to it i i don't disagree with his point i do think that it's very possible that a man can make less than a woman and they can have a successful relationship you know they can but i think where it becomes tricky is when you're you know if you do choose to have offspring you choose to have children are you in a situation where you are able to care for her? Um, but it, it, there are so many conversations that have to be had. Okay, yes, you make more than me, but maybe we need to live on my means and save you know, your excess so that if something is to happen and I have to be the breadwinner, I know I can provide for us. Because I know that like men carry things differently in terms of like, sustaining a household and being the leader like you yeah. there are different thought patterns that we have so i'm sure that is something that comes up like i think about the fact that after savi was born during the pandemic i was unemployed for a year everything fell on you so you know you have to be in position to be able to support a family if something like that is to happen so i i don't i don't dispute what he's saying Again, I don't know how other communities communicate. I don't know if in the white community they have conversations where it's like, it's okay if you make more and he doesn't. Um, and I don't know if that's Asian, the Latin American. I don't know how those yeah. communities converse. It just seems like a lot of these conversations happen in the black community and it comes off as, well, 
black woman if you're successful you have to be willing to settle somewhere like you cannot have your cake and eat it too you you do have to have a man you might have to just tolerate a man who makes significantly less than you yeah i wonder if that's because they're sort of black women economically speaking uh are victims of their own success Mm -hmm. if you think about it right because they're ascending right like you do all the stats like black women are are graduating um, at higher rates, they're they're making more money than than ever before. Um, starting businesses, entrepreneurship, the whole boss lady, boss chick mentality, or whatever. Um, and they're looking for um, a man who makes more than them. So, like, say you're a six figure black woman, and you want a black man who's making six figures or whatever may not be as populous or may not be as plentiful mm-hmm. as like say a white man with high value and this kind of circles back to the whole Kevin Samuels thing right like women some black women who are like that want a, want a high value man but a high value man may not want like may not want the woman so it's like well where do I go so it's like okay well do you kind of need to maybe adjust you know, so they adjust your standards a little bit and so <clears throat> I think it's an interesting dynamic, right? Like as somebody who's married, obviously this doesn't apply to me, apply to us. But it could. It could. Because it's literally but you it, know, one interview away from me potentially making significantly more than you. Yeah, but I think his, I think his, so his, his premise was different. Like if you're, Uber, it seems like he was almost paying the woman as uber successful and the guy was like way below, mm-hmm. like maybe hourly, not even salary, right? Like making a decent salary. Um, whereas where we're at now, if you made, if you got an interview or interview away and you nailed it and you got a position that took you to a certain level, it's not like I'm sitting here working retail, mm-hmm. you know, as an hourly associate. So. I mean, but you're more than welcome to pay yeah, the mortgage. Yeah, because you're quick to send over yeah. that Mr. Clean meme. More than welcome to pay the mortgage if you if you want to, because you you know you you pay the mortgage. This is the same bank account. You sleep here. You sleep here too, so you can you put in some you can put in some work. So, um, so I think it's a little different, uh, but you know, I do think it's a little interesting that people are always like whenever this topic comes up it's like black woman you know just give him give him time and and you know accept him as he is you know if he if he, if he but i mean there's something wrong with that okay because i was gonna there's, say i don't dispute that it's absolutely because i had to give you time nobody is awake there's absolutely nothing wrong with that but it's like i hear it a lot I hear, I hear, what side are you on? I hear it. I'm not on anybody. I'm I'm observing. I can't tell like what you support and what you don't. I don't. I'm just speaking. I'm just mm-hmm. reacting to what I heard. Mm-hmm. But I do hear that a lot. Um, and whereas you had to do that with me, I don't know that every every guy is like is like me. But that and, I'm not, and that's not me. That's not painting myself as like some some saint or some no but you're great you're you you're great in that aspect of and that's why it's hard for me to speak on these because i have i have an anomaly of a man all all, all i'm saying is and i'll I'll let you say your piece but all i'm saying is i do think that it's unfair that it it seems like whenever some talking head is always trying to give black women relationship advice Mm -hmm. more than likely if there there there's this element of you need to adjust your preferences your 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 standards in order to help you know you may have to t- you know be patient right and wait for him to catch a stride help him get mm-hmm. to where he needs to go um there is a lot of that rhetoric and a lot of the you know advice relationship advice that let's be real a lot of a lot of men give to 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 black women um now you can look at like i said uh, statistically speaking, economically, economically speaking, black successful black women may find themselves in like this, this, uh, this no man's land, no pun intended, where you know the men they they covet aren't really interested in them, mm-hmm. 
but the men that are interested in them aren't necessarily at their standard. So it's like, well, what do I do? Yeah. So, and it just seems like more times than not, the advice is like, well, just lower your standards. And mm-hmm. then you have your pick of the litter. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's kind of unfair. And I, I get, I, I could, I can understand the frustration. It's like, oh, why are you always trying to tell Why don't you tell men to, hey, be more serious about education or getting a trade rather than mm-hmm. playing 2K or, you know, playing ball or whatever, um, or trying to rap or, you know, trying to be a professional athlete or, or anything that, you know, usually gets a lot of attention from, from black men in America. Um, you know, how come that's never really placed upon, you know, instead of just saying, Oh, well, you know, you might need to, if, you know, if the best he can do is pay the light bill. You just got to struggle with, you know, it's like, well, how much is the light bill? If, if <laughs> hey, these days, I mean, the house that has that couch, that's, it's got a serious light bill, light but mortgage. you actually, you make some really good points. Um, Thanks. and I, I agree with them a lot. Shit, though. You're, you're very welcome. Um, we it goes back. That's, that's rush vibes for this week, y'all. We out. <laughs> I think it goes back to the episode. Um, I can't remember his name, but you put the clip in where you know he was emphasizing that there's nothing wrong with with women being a single woman. Um, I can't remember exactly the guy from Powers. Kevin, not Kevin. Mm, Megan. Oh, Devon. Yes, um, her ex husband and his sermon that he had preached. Um, so it's it's spot on for you to say like people are always telling black women maybe women in general like oh you know it's okay if he doesn't have x y and z like you know you're here here because they've weaponized and demonized successful women you know women you know getting masters doctorates law degrees all of the i think they have i i I think your boy Boy. Kevin. Kevin weaponized women getting degrees. Yeah, like the little that I've seen. Um, Emphasis on little. Little, but I did have to watch. I had to watch. I was at my parents' house. They were they were watching him, and I was just like, "Your parents watch Kevin Samuels." <sighs> this is interesting to me. Really? Yes. On their own. On their own. Like, why were they watching Kevin Samuels? I I, th- I feel like they agree with agree him? with him, and yeah, that's that, very that doesn't surprise me because a lot of his stuff is very like. Extremist, like extremist slash traditionalist like type mentality, and you know your parents are very traditional, to say the least. To say but the least. um, and I say that with all respect. The course. little that I've absorbed, like he, it seems like he weaponizes women for being educated, for being um advanced and I, I i haven't i the interactions that i saw were like the, i think all the women were nurses most of the women were nurses and he was just like oh i've heard about nurses and it's not good to be a nurse and blah 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 but i think from a cultural take you're 100 percent spot on that not enough pressure is put on and if we're just going to stay on, on race on black men there's okay, not so enough. I did not say that. Well, I'm saying this. <laughs> so don't put. Don't not put enough. Down. Not enough pressure is that put don't. on black men That's in turn. Like yeah. yes, we encourage our whole community from childhood. We're encouraging people go to school, get educated. You know, do what you have to do. But I think, and you see it. I think a lot of it comes from moms of boys. Nobody is awake, David. Um, moms or boys are very, are a different kind of protective of their sons. And I'm not, I'm not entirely sure why. Um, it, it seems very culturally normal to raise girls, to become self-sufficient, to become independent. You know, I'm going to teach, you need to know how to cook. You need to know how to clean. You need to know how to take care of people. I don't know that all of that is necessarily instilled in boys especially boys who don't who might not have a father figure as well i think it's very much so like oh this is my baby i gotta protect my baby don't talk to my son like that like you better be good to my boy like there it it's different how men are protected by their mothers in comparison to how women are protected by their mothers women are raised to task to be caretakers 
I don't think that we, and it's not even just on like an employment perspective. I don't know that there's enough. It's done because, you know, I, I feel like I'm married to a man and I could have just, you know, you could just be luck of the draw, luck of the DNA um, and defaulted that way. But I don't know that there are a lot of, in the rearing process that parents are intentional about raising a son who is capable of taking care of himself and also understanding what like if your goal is to become a husband and a father these are the things you need to do and instilling that confidence in them of this is how the head of a household carries himself this is what you're supposed to do this is how you should be if you're going to be the head of the household i don't think role types are instilled in boys into men as it is in girls into women so then you have these women who are raised these girls who are raised into women who know what they're supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be a wife. I'm supposed to take care of a house. I'm supposed to bear children. I'm supposed to provide, like, that's, that's my role. Whereas a lot of men, it's more so, you know, you're, you're raised to be sexualized. You're raised to, you know, the things you're supposed to be interested in, you know, the things you're supposed to do as opposed to the role you're supposed to carry. I don't know that we raise boys to be husbands, whereas we raise girls, in my opinion, to be um, mothers and wives. And I think that's why you get this instance where we're telling people, you know, you should have to, you know, it's okay if he doesn't make as much as you and he can only put in on the light bill. No, it's not okay that he can only put in on the light bill. If you're making 120000 and he's making 50000 he can put in on more than just the light bill. Now, if you have chosen to buy a place where your mortgage is five thousand dollars a month no he can't afford to put in five thousand dollars but he can afford to put in on something like we can't qualify or excuse the fact that just because he's not making exactly as much as you're making he should put in like like he 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 shouldn't be held accountable in some because he's living he's eating he can he can put in on something he might not be able to take you to Ruth chris every once in a while but if he is strategic and responsible and taught financial literacy he might be able to put a little nest egg aside and say okay for you know every once a quarter i'm going to take you out to a nice um dinner like there are people who don't live beyond their means but it's a i think metaphorically you've got you're thinking of oh she makes this much money she's going to want to live on this level but maybe she also will have to adjust herself in terms of like okay i'm married i'm with this man who doesn't make as much where can we meet in the middle to make it work for both of us but i think a lot of it just stems foundationally of what role are we raising these men to these boys to men and what role are we raising these girls to and why are they clashing did i lose this is uh, this is this is exactly why i normally intentionally take the opposite opinion of you because when i agree you take my what little one point i agree with and then you just blow it out of proportion I mean, this so now you got Now you got to make it seem like I'm saying that the men we raise the men to be shit. And I, I'm not saying I think those are nah. A I lot think of I, I think, I think a lot of a lot of people don't hold. I think that's boys a, as accountable to things as I girls. Think, I think that's unfair. This is low key why I wanted a son. I didn't. I've never wanted a boy, but. I always said if I did have a boy, like I would, equal, it would be my sole purpose to raise that son to be as close to a perfect husband to someone's daughter. And I know that sounds, it might sound egotistical, narcissistic, or everything, it but is. I would. Why would you? Because, why would you? Because he's not supposed to, like, you. we always talk about how. We, oh, Savi's up. Yeah. Um, and there's actually this one woman, I've seen her um, her videos, her reels on, um, she has a son and she, she'll post like different things she's teaching her son. He's a little kid, maybe like Solace's age, so that your daughter doesn't have to deal with it. And I love her for it because I'm like, th if I had had a son, Man, this is... You know, I'm sorry. This kind of frustrates me a little bit. Why? Because 
it implies that all of the growth in a marriage, or the majority of the growth, needs to come from the man more times than not. And it's so unfair. And it's not, and it's, one, is not true, because for every five things that you could point at that you expected me to be ready-made at, I could throw as many back at you that you were absolutely not. Just absolutely not. And so I think it's great. If you want to raise your kid, if the sole purpose of your parenting is to raise your kid to be the perfect spouse. I didn't say perfect. I'm, no, no, no. Perfect you, you actually did. I said as close to perfect. Close, okay. So as close to being the perfect spouse, like if, if that's your goal in life, I mean, hey, it's your, it's your offspring. Like, go for it. Um, I think we should raise kids to be good human beings first. Mm-hmm. Um, to be to 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 build don't the disagree. skills to be effective contributing members of society, uh, and not, you know, fall by the wayside. Uh, and as a result of that, we should be instilling, assuming that we have the ability to, uh, we should be instilling the core principles and qualities that would lead them to be a good spouse eventually. I don't think anybody starts off a great spouse because marriage is is an adjustment for most people. I mean, you may get the, the, the diamond in the rough couple where it's like, yo, we're just smooth sailing from point A to point Z when we die. But more times than not, there's a lot of growth that needs to happen um, on both sides. Maybe sometimes one side more than the other, but usually there's growth that needs to happen. So I, I, just, I just get frustrated where a lot of the, the criticism is on how young boys are raised into men when you know women aren't exactly walking into marriage perfect either with like as the perfect partner either so i think yeah i would love to see you know you promoting as many videos of dads teaching their daughters things that i see those videos too and i love them but you don't talk about those those aren't the ones you talk about. You talk about the ones that you just talked about, which this is, is very, which is the first time. This is the first time I've brought up a video, and that's because I was stating the type of mother I would be. But what, but because what, no, 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 a lot of cultures, a lot of cultures do raise their daughters to become wives. But what I'm saying is, but, is that when this when this topic is when we discuss this topic, it's usually slanted one way. Yeah, because we were literally talking about how women are supposed to settle according to Pastor Perry. And I agree with you, which was my mistake. I'm never doing um, it According to him, women are supposed to essentially be okay with, but the reason why I think the issue is developed is because we we raise women girls to become women into specific role types and i don't know i'm not raising a boy i can't speak to this i don't feel but i've witnessed boys being raised i don't know that we always necessarily raise boys to become successful husbands and and fathers i do i do agree that there are there's growth that comes within marriage and that's the beauty of marriage you grow together you learn together but i do think that there is a disservice done to a lot of women because sometimes the uh, the 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 male options in the pool are men who are just raised to be men Hmm not necessarily raised for their role type where you do have women where you're teaching them how to do this because you need to take and 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 i've heard this my whole life oh because you want to be a good wife you want to be able to take be a good mother this is how you take care of your babies blah 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 blah. i don't you don't and even think about toys you know our kids have have baby dolls and like you don't have baby dolls for boys a lot of boys don't grow up having baby dolls and understanding even little things such as nurturing um Action figures. Action figures, but I played my mom's Barbies too. But did you have baby dolls? Um, Were you like participating in like the nurturing? I, mean, and I wasn't like pretending to breastfeed a baby or nothing. No, I'm not saying you should have been pretending to breastfeed a baby. But I'm just saying, like, even from toys. So I spent a lot of time with my mom. So I got a lot of. Uh, I didn't get explicit direction on how to be more um emotionally sensitive how to raise girl little girls raise them not to be selfish 
She's like three. the three, like the three that we have, or the two that we have currently, because that one will sleep. That one's gonna get her sleep. But these other two, it's got to be all about me. When I wake up, I don't care about nobody else. That's we're selfish. also having a full conversation right outside. Get her. that selfishness out of young girls. Let's do that. Let's build them up to be selfless. How about that? Can we do that? I think we're gonna have to wrap it up and. Yeah, I know we're going to wrap Continue it up. this next week. We didn't even get to talk about she's doing the most. We didn't even get to talk about the trending couples. The what? The trending couples. The trending couples? Mm-hmm. Who's trending? The couples. What couples? You got Jenny and Jeezy. You got... Oh, yeah. Well, oh, that was supposed to be last week, too. You got... What is, what's their name? Trailer? Travis? Trav, tra- Tiana, Tiana and... Uh, no, not them. Uh, Taylor Swift. Oh, Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. We ain't talking about... Oh, I thought we would have let off with that. Yeah, tra- uh, Taylor Swift and Travis uh, Kelsey. Um, trailer. That's what they're called. Tra- yeah, they're called Trailer. Yeah. So apparently the Swifties have been boosting his, uh, his notoriety. Yeah, they, they had no clue who he was, and now they do. And apparently, like, that game set the, set the rating record for a 4.30 p.m. game on a Sunday because everybody was tuned in, Swifties included. Just to see... Just to see Travis Kelsey because that's Taylor Swift's boo. So someone must have, like, it must have gotten out that she was there and then that's why... Yeah, she was the next one. And that's why everybody watched it. It's interesting. Took time out of her tour to uh, go support her man. It's interesting. It's, it's big time. Um, But yeah, we got to wrap because... Uh, as much as we love talking and this is supposed to be our like one night a week where we know we get to talk without kids being influenced. One of our kids has decided to wake up and cry. And potentially wake up her other sister. And potentially wake up the sister who's sleeping underneath her. So uh, we're going to wrap. Sorry we were off last week again. Just didn't have it to get to get in front of you guys and put a put a worthwhile episode out in front of you. Um, but we are back this week, so be sure to like it and subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, you can check us out on Apple, Spotify podcast. No more Google. Google podcast is going away. It's now YouTube Music. And they're gonna like roll podcasts yeah. up into that. Yeah. So Google killing another service, uh, which they're they're known for. Um, and yeah, maybe we'll uh, leave everything set up. Maybe we'll record tomorrow night and maybe we'll get a, uh, we'll just touch on those topics and then put it out. Uh, I don't know. We can't really afford to leave the stuff set up though because. We got liabilities. We got liabilities. But who knows? Worst case, we'll be back next week. So appreciate y'all rocking with us. Uh, be safe. Have a good weekend. Enjoy your football. Got some pass. And we will yeah. see you next week. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far, can stop me now I done came way too far, can stop me now I done came way too far, can stop me now I done came way too far, can stop me now Can stop me now, can stop me now Yeah, I done came way too far, can stop me now